Hey guys, and welcome to my channel. My name is Erin, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to create a digital planner from start to finish. So as you can see, this is a digital planner created for school, but you can basically create a digital planner for anything. I created mine for my student teaching. I am in a four semester combined credential and master's program, and I wanted to create a planner that fit my needs um, where I could both lesson plan and have my regular school work in my planner as well. So like I said, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to make this planner from start to finish. I'm just going to go through a couple of slides with you. So as you guys can see, all the tabs work and I have different things listed under the tabs. Um, stickers, I will show you guys what that means later. Um, my notes, quick links, and then I can click any of these links to go to random pages here. And then, we, of course, we have the months, and we have what our months look like. So if you guys want to learn how to make a planner that is fully functional and that you can use um, and create to fit your needs, then keep on watching. So like I stated before, I'm going to be showing you guys how to create your own digital planner. And for that, you need a couple of items. So the first thing that you're going to need is Keynote. And Keynote is the Mac version of PowerPoint. So you can either use Keynote or PowerPoint. Today, I'm going to be showing you guys how to use Keynote. If you'd like the tutorial on PowerPoint, let me know down below. Um, but you are going to need Keynote. And if you don't have access to it, it, um, on your Mac, you can log into it on iCloud and use Keynote from there. So I will go ahead and leave a link to that in the description box if you don't have access, but you should be able to use the same um, platform on there. You're also going to need the app GoodNotes. Um, you're going to upload this planner into GoodNotes after you're all completely finished, um, and that's how you're going to digital plan. I'm not sure how this works with Notability or OneNote, um, but I know for sure if you can upload a PDF to it and use hyperlinks, then you are able to use it. Um, but I just found that this is really well compatible with GoodNotes. You're also going to need um, you're also going to need a font of your choice depending on what you enjoy. Um, I just chose some fonts that I will also link down below. You're going to need a texture for your planner or a solid cover page, whatever you want to do. Your background. Um, you're just going to need to find some inspiration off of Google and find some pictures that you really like to use for your background and the cover for your planner. And I think that's everything you're going to need. Everything that I use will be linked down below for you to utilize, including um, sizes that I used, as well as any fonts or color palettes and things that I use like that will all be listed in the description of this video. So if you guys want to learn how to create a digital planner from start to finish, then keep on watching. The first step to creating your digital planner is opening up Keynote. And when you open up Keynote, you want to head over to this area right here and make sure that it's set on standard four by three because in that case it will make sure that everything is positioned and sized right in good notes it'll fit your ipad literally perfectly if you use 16 by 9 there's going to be a ton of extra space around the border and it's not going to fill good notes perfectly so i would recommend using a four by three and then you're just going to come over to any presentation you want to choose because we're going to end up deleting everything off the screen anyways so we're going to make this full size and delete everything off the screen because we just want a blank slate. Then we're going to head over to where it says background and choose image fill. So this is where we're going to add our background. This is going to be the beginning of our like front page of our planner. So I am going to go in and choose a wooden background, just like the one you guys just saw me create. And this is what it looks like. So super easy. Um, that is the first step in creating your planner. So make sure you go to Google and find a really high quality image that you can use as the background. Now I'm going to start creating the cover and I actually have some sizes for this. So I'm going to go over to shape and I'm going to choose the rounded rectangle tool. And I'm just going to have that there and I'm going to head over to a range and we're going to enter the size. So I have it as a size of 908 for the width. I have it as 687 for the height and then I have it as 44 for the corner radius and that should give you a really nice squared off um, box just like this. So we are going to move it down and we're going to reposition this as we start to add more things to our cover page. So I personally want it to be that really pretty leather looking planner so i'm going to head over to again style which is right here head over to fill and we're going to change it to image fill and we're going to choose another image and add your texture 
And then I personally found that I like to go to original size for this particular photo so that I can see the texture. Um, and you can size that as big or as small as you want it to be. So that is going to be the basis of our planner. Now, personally for me, I like to add a thread around our planner. Um, I think it looks cuter that way. If you like to add a thread, you're more than welcome to. You don't have to. So I'm just going to copy and paste um, what we just created. And then I'm going to go to no fill. And then I'm also going to hit border and hit line. Okay, so you should get something like this. And then I want my line to be dotted just like that. Um, actually, I want something a little bit longer. So it's going to look like this. Now I'm going to go to arrange one more time and then I'm going to resize our thread. So I have it as 884 by 670. Oops. And with a corner radius of 42. Now again, this is completely up to you how you want to design um, your planner if you like these sizes or not, but these are just like a base size um, for what you want to do. So I'm going to hit it like this and I'm going to change it to a really pretty off-white shade. Um, that's a little too bright for me. So I'm just going to go over here and change it to an off-white. Perfect. So now we have the outline bases of our planner. So for me, I actually like to add binder rings on the side. So we're just going to exit out of Keynote really quick and look for some binder rings. I actually bought these off of Etsy. Um, so I will go ahead and link the shop down below. But these are just the binder rings that were in the set here. And this is just what they look like. Um, so I'm going to choose the gold single hole rings and add those to my um, planner here and add them as I like them. So if you're like me and think that the binder rings are too long, you can just double click the binder rings or whatever photo that you chose and crop it. So I'm just going to bring it all the way down so that I can crop it, hit done, and then I can expand the rings as big as I want them to be. And again, this is all up to you and how you like to personally plan and how you like things to look. Um, I'm going to, I think, make it a little bit smaller and add an extra ring on the bottom. That looks like the top. Oops. And then I'm just gonna pull things down. And I like it about here. So this is going to be the basis for our cover and then I'm also going to go ahead and add a shadow to both the background, so the brown part here. I'm going to go to shadow and add a drop shadow. So it looks like it pops off the page a little bit and then I'm also going to do the same thing for our binder rings. We're going to also add a shadow there. There we are. So here is the very beginnings of our planner. And then I'm also going to really quickly adjust this to make sure that it's perfectly centered. So now we want to go ahead and add tabs. That's how we get our planner, our digital planner to function. And I also have the measurements for those as well. So I'm going to go back to shape tool and I'm also going to grab another rounded rectangle. And I'm going to go ahead and head over to arrange and we're going to go ahead and put in the measurements for the tabs. So I have it as 197, 58 with a corner radius of 13. All right, and it should look something like this. So here are what our tabs look like. And then I'm going to go ahead and send them backwards so I can see, or to the back, excuse me, so I can see what the tabs look like. For me, I personally did four tabs. So I'm just going to hit Command C, one, and then I'm going to hit Command V three more times. So one, two, three. And then I'm going to move the one that I want to be the furthest where I want it to be. Then I'm going to select the rest of the tabs that I have. See, select all the rest of those. And then I'm going to go to distribute and I'm going to distribute them horizontally. Then I'm going to align them at the top. And lastly, I'm going to send everything to the back. So it should give you something that looks like this. Now I'm going to go ahead and change the colors of my tabs so you guys can kind of see what I'm doing, give you a little bit of an easier view. 
Um, but that is what our tabs look like and you can choose to scale and shift them however you please. But I think this is going to be good. I think I'm going to move them up a little bit more in height. Um, but that is going to be basically all we do for the tabs. All right, so next we need to make our side tabs. So I'm going to go back to the shape tool and hit rounded rectangle. Then we're going to go to the arrange tab and we're going to go ahead and put in the measurement. So it's going to be 72 by 61 by 11. And then I'm just going to go ahead and drag it to where I would want it to be. And I'm going to go ahead and make 12 more of these. So I'm just going to command C and then paste with command V. I'm going to make 11 more. So we have a total of 12 for our 12 months. All right. So we have all 11 of these and we're going to select them all and we are going to align them all to the left so that they're all the same. Then I'm going to go ahead and drag one of them down to the last spot that I would want a month to be. And then I'm going to go ahead and select them all again. We're going to align to the left and distribute vertically. So you should get something like this. Then I'm going to select them all once again, send them to the back, and then I'm going to add a drop shadow so that they all kind of stand out just like this. Okay, and then you can just align them evenly how you would want them to be, and then distribute vertically again, just kind of giving yourself some options here um, and making sure they look how you want them to look. All right, so now that you have all of your tabs done, this would be the time where you would get all stylish and personal and personalize your planner however you want to. So I'm going to show you guys some brief tips on how I do that. So the first tip is, first of all, making sure that your tabs look how you want them to. So I'm going to show you guys what my planner looks like one more time. So this is what my planner looks like, and you guys see that I have this beautiful color scheme going on here. Um, I actually chose these colors from something else. So I'm going to show you guys really quickly where I got these colors from. Alright, so I actually have color palettes saved onto my computer. Just like this. So I'm going to actually go to that folder real quick. And as you guys can see, I have tons and tons and tons of color palettes. I absolutely love these. I got a majority of them from Sarah Ray Clark, and that's, or excuse me, Sarah Renee Clark, and this is her um, logo down here. But I got a ton of my inspiration from Sarah Renee Clark. So I'm going to show you guys the ones that I actually used. I used the one right here. I used this one um, called 320 Door. I also use this one called um, 307 Forest, and then I also used a mix of this one. I took the two purples from this one, um, 324 Chocolate. So those are the ones that I use. I will list her website down below, but that's what I use for my colors. And all you do is take a picture. We're going to close this off now. You're going to click one of your tabs. You're going to head over to Style. You're going to go to the color fill section and you're going to click this little um, circle orb thing. Then you're going to come to the color picker and you're going to pick whatever color you want to change it to. And that'll change your colors for you right then and there. Um, so that is a really easy way to change the colors. And then also you might want to add text to yours. So for me, I'm going to show you guys how I did the months over here. I want it to say January. So I'm going to put Jan on there. I'm going to change it to whatever font that I'm feeling that day and I'm going to go to arrange and I'm going to flip it to a negative 90. That'll get everything to flip over and then I'm going to head over to um, my tab and I'm going to go ahead and size it to what I think will fit really well. So I'm going to size it to a 15 which I think will fit really well. Oops. Drag it on down. Perfect. And then I'm going to actually change it to a white color. And then I'm going to add a drop shadow to make it pop up the page. I'm going to go back to style. I'm going to hit shadow and hit drop shadow and it will pop off the page just like that. So it's super easy, 
really easy to create. And then one last thing that I'm going to show you how to do um, before I copy and paste my own little uh, stuff on here. I'm going to show you guys how I created this little bar right here. So it's super simple. I'm just going to head on back over. So all I did was grab a shape. I grabbed a just regular squared off square and I just created you want to make it as thin as you want it to be so you don't have to start over so I'm gonna create two of these bars as far out as I want them to be then I'm gonna create another one of these bars and I'm gonna to go to arrange and I'm going to flip it so I'm gonna hit it to a 90 and it should be flipped then I'm going to go up to the top of the bar and drag it all the way across. And again, it's at a width of 5. So make sure you remember that when you're going across here. It's at a width of 5. So we have the same kind of angle all the way down. And then if you want to adjust this, I'm going to adjust this to like a 125 so that it's longer just like so super easy to do okay and then you're just gonna copy this bar down here and place it down there so now you want to make this however short you want it to be so I'm gonna make it a 200 and I might want to make it a little bit shorter than that so I'm gonna make it like to maybe 150 okay and then I'm just going to copy and paste that line it up there I'm gonna hit this box and this box and I'm gonna go ahead and line it up so I'm gonna do a line to the top and that should be about even once you complete the box that you wanted to do if this looks good to you you are going to select everything that you created, all four lines or all five lines that you created. Then you're going to hit Unite and then you should be good to go. Then you can change it to whatever color you want to by going to Style and changing the fill. For me, I personally went to um, Fill and chose Image Fill. And then I went ahead and chose a really pretty foiled pattern. So I just had foil available. So I just had some foil available and then I just used a foiled like piece of paper background kind of thing photo and I created this really pretty gold foiled background. So that is basically how I customize the front of my planner. So I'm going to go ahead and customize mine real quick and then I will be right back with you guys. Alright, so we are done. This is what our planner looks like and it is super simple and super cute. Like I said, you can go ahead and creatively decorate this however you want to. This is how I decided to do mine, um, but you are more than welcome to decorate it however you see fit. Alright, so now we need to go ahead and start making the actual slides of our planner. So we are going to go in and select on the left hand side in that pane our um, original slide. We're going to hit Control C and Command V or Command C and Command V to copy and paste. So now we're going to be beginning to make this our master slide. So all we're going to do is delete what we have off the first page, just like that. Now we're going to go ahead and make the paper for our planner. Um, and we're going to do all of this before we create our master slide, just to make things a little bit easier on ourselves. So for our paper, we're just going to go ahead and command um, C and command V, the little stripes or the little like stitching around our planner. We're going to go back to border. We're going to make no border. And then we're going to go back to fill and we're going to hit color fill. And we're going to just make this a white piece of paper. Then we're going to head over to arrange to go ahead and put in our sizes. So I have our paper as a size of 868 by 659 with a um, corner radius of 40. Perfect. And then you're just going to go ahead and center that right on the page. It should be like clockwork for you. You're going to head over to your binder rings and you're going to pull those all the way to the front. So it looks something like this. And super easy, we already have our first page done. So now we're going to hit Command A and copy everything on this, C, on this page. So Command A to select everything and Command C to copy. 
we're going to head over to style one more time and then deselect everything. We're then going to go to edit master slide. We're going to delete everything off the master slide. Then we're going to go to background and we're going to go ahead and do an image fill. So we're going to put the exact same background that we used earlier. So I use that wooden background. So that's where we're going to go ahead and use. Then we're going to go ahead and command V to paste everything that we used already as our master slide on there. And we want to make sure that this paper is completely stark white. So if it changed on you, make sure you go ahead and change it back. Make sure that everything looks good from here and we are good to go. Perfect. So we're going to change this to a stark white. Apparently that wasn't a stark white that I chose. Stark white. There we go. So it looks just like our master slide. Everything looks absolutely perfect. So now what we are going to go ahead and do is we are going to make 16 more pages. Reason being we need one for schedule, stickers, notes, and quick links. And then we also need one for all of the 12 months going down. So we're going to go ahead and hit new slide. And that should create our master slide. And we need um, a total of... 13 more of these so we need to get down or 14 more of these so we need to get down to a total of 17 slides so we're going to hit command c and then just paste all the way down until we get to 17. perfect so we're down to 17 and now we're going to go ahead and go back to edit our master slide because now we're going to start linking things so now we're going to hit the back tab of schedule and make sure you're hitting the tab it's going to be a lot easier to click this when you're using your digital notebook um, instead of just clicking the words so we're going to hit right click we're going to go to add to link and we're going to hit slide and we're going to link this to slide two Okay, we're going to do the same thing for stickers. Make sure you hit the back of the tab. Try not to hit the actual words. I know it's a little bit difficult sometimes to not hit the words. There we go. We're going to right click. Oops. Hit that back. And we're going to right click, hit add link, slide, and we're going to put this for slide three. And we're just going to do this all the way down in order because it will make our life so much easier. It's going to be slide four. It's going to be to slide five. Same thing with all of our months over here. January is going to start at slide six and we're going to work our way all the way down. All right, so now we are officially done linking all of our slides and the purpose of linking slides is that once we link slides, you guys can see we link schedule to slide two. We can see that schedule now goes to slide three. We linked notes to, I believe, slide five. We can see that notes, or excuse me, stickers now leads to slide five. So we want that same feature to work in our digital notebook as we're creating it. And that is how we create it to work. So now you're going to go ahead and hit done. And now there should be links on every single slide. So you're going to go back to um, all of our slides here and check to make sure that everything has slides that are being linked. And it looks like we have links on all of our slides. So that's how we know that everything is working properly and ready to go um, and everything looks good. All right, so that is the basis of how we create our slides and how we create our planner to function. Now you can add whatever pages you want to add. Um, this is completely up to you. Now I'm going to show you guys how I do some of the fun stuff and how I add some pizzazz to my planner. Um, so I'm going to show you guys really quickly. So I like to add text at the top of every single one of my pages. Um, it's just a personal preference for me. So like the first one would say schedule. And I personally like to use the font Futurist Fix With. And everything actually has to be in caps for it to look how I want it to look. 
Okay, and then you can go ahead and make the font however big you want it to be. That's a little bit too big for me. And that's a little bit too big for me. So we're gonna go with 35. You can center it. And then for me, because this is a um, school planner as well as a lesson planner, I'm gonna go ahead and put the semester, semester two. Okay, so then what I like to do personally is I like to make charts to label my um, semester. So all I do is go into tech, or excuse me, not text, I go into shape, hit one of those rectangle tools and create what I wanna create. So I want one of these, but then I also want it to have no fill because I want it to be blank. So when I add stickers, um, it'll look really cute, no fill, but I do want a border. So I'm gonna hit line and I'm gonna go ahead and make it whatever color I want to. I'm gonna make it like this really pretty chocolatey brown color. And then I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the line however I want it to be. I like mine to look like this. And then I'm gonna make five of them. So one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to drag it over as far as I want it to be. Then I'm gonna go ahead and select, oops, select the rest of them. I'm gonna go to arrange, align at the top, and distribute horizontally. So you guys can see that things are overlapping and I don't have enough room. So then I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the width and that should do it right about there. I'm gonna drag it over one more time and then adjust everything accordingly. I'm gonna go ahead and distribute horizontally one more time. And again, if that's too close for you, you can work it down just a little bit more and adjust vertical, or excuse me, adjust horizontally. And then this should give you something more like you're looking for. And then for me, all I do is just copy the text and I put Monday and we're gonna make it like a 15, place it on top. And for me, I really like that gold flare. So I'm just gonna go into text. I'm going to hit text color. And I'm gonna hit image fill and we are going to fill it in with that foil. Sometimes it pops up, sometimes it doesn't. So I just have to go find it again. Fill it in with that foil and it's absolutely beautiful. Then I'm gonna do the same thing. All right, so now I've created a schedule that I can use to keep track of every single week. Um, this is for the things that repeat on a weekly basis. I'm gonna have the same classes on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. They usually don't change once you're in a class for a semester. And this is an easy way to look back at your schedule and make sure that you're attending the right classes on the right day, especially in the beginning of the semester when you are just adjusting to your new classes. So that's a really quick way to make a schedule. And you can use this same type of idea to make anything that you want to with just these really cool text boxes or these like shape boxes. Now I'm going to show you guys how to create quick links, which I think is one of the coolest parts of this tutorial. So quick links was linked to page five, I believe. So schedules, stickers, notes, quick links. So again, I'm just going to go ahead and copy this title here, paste it on our page five as quick links. Perfect. And all you do is create um, a shape just like this, any old shape that you want to. I'm going to thin this out and I'm going to round out the corners a little bit. Okay, so you're gonna thin this out, make it whatever shape you want to. Then you're gonna go ahead and color it to be whatever you want it to be colored. So I'm just gonna take this really pretty color here and make it this color. Perfect, so we have our beginnings ready. So now we're gonna head over to text and you're gonna label this whatever you want it to be. So I'm going to label it as yearly overview. Okay, and I'm going to select that, change it to whatever font we want it to be. 
and we're going to shift it down to wherever we need it to be. Perfect. Um, I actually can make the text a little bit bigger on this one because I have the room. Put it at 17. Perfect. So that's what it's going to look like. And you can change this to whatever color you want it to be. No big deal. So I'm going to make it white. So the really cool thing with this is that you can go ahead and select this and you're actually going to want to make a new slide down here for page six. So you're going to hit this pill and you're going to link it to page six. Just like we did in our previous links before it's now linked to page six. So now when you hit this link in your planner, it'll send you to page six and it'll be whatever you want it to be. I think this page is so important because you can easily jump to pages that you may want to use frequently, but you don't have enough room to put it in the tabs up here or the tabs on the side. If you don't want to use tabs on the bottom, um, this is a really easy way to jump to pages that you might use frequently. So I'm going to show you guys what it looks like in an actual planner. So here are my quick links in GoodNotes. So like I said, I have a yearly overview. I can just go ahead and hop over to the yearly overview and I'm able to see what the year looks like at a glance. Um, if I wanted to hop over to some templates, I can hop over here to dotted paper and then I can copy and paste this template to wherever I want it to be in my planner. So it's really, really helpful to have these on hand um, for the most useful things that you may want to use. So that is a little bit about quick links and why those are so important. And lastly for this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to make blank pages that you can insert into your planner. So what you're going to want to do is scroll all the way to the bottom and you're going to want to make a new tab or an, a new um, page. So then what you're going to want to do is copy the paper template that we made before. So an easy way to do that is go to edit master slide and you're going to go ahead and select the paper and you're going to select the binder rings. You need to select both of them and control C. You're going to go ahead and hit done and you're going to control V on top of the paper that you have now. All right, so now you're going to go ahead and click the paper that you just pasted. You're going to go ahead and go over to style. You're going to hit color fill and then you're going to select image fill. Again, you have that image filled already, but you're going to head over to whatever type of paper you want to use. So I'm going to go ahead and use grid paper. Again, it's super easy to search. You can just go over to Google and image search grid paper printable, and you should be able to find a ton of grid paper options that you can use. Um, so I go ahead and paste that into there. And now you are all good to go and that's what your grid paper looks like and now you can use these as templates for whenever you want to add them into your planner. So again I'm going to show you guys how I do that so I'm going to go ahead and go to our grid paper templates and again this is why quick links is so important. Alright so now we're at our grid paper so what you're going to do is head over to the bar side or you can head over to these three dots right here. You're going to hit copy page it's copied. Now let's say I want to add it in January after I've done my lesson planning. So this is my lesson planning template. I'm going to go ahead and right click and I'm going to put add page after and then I'm going to hit paste page. And now I have this really pretty um, little grid paper here and it does not mess up any of my remaining quick links. So as you guys can see, I can head to February just fine. It didn't mess up any of my quick links. Head back to January just fine. All of my links are still working, but you're able to copy and paste pages to um, add to your digital planner or notebook or whatever you're creating. And then if you want to delete it, you can just hit move to trash. Just like that. All right, guys, and the last thing I need to show you, I promise this is the last thing, is how to export and upload it into GoodNotes. So basically, all you do is head over to File and Keynote. You're going to go to Export to, and then you're going to export it as a PDF, and you're going to hit Next, and you can save it as whatever you want to. So I'm going to put Trial Planner. We're saving it as a PDF. Then you're going to head over to GoodNotes you're going to head over to this original screen that you get when you open the app. You're going to hit new import and then I'm going to go ahead and import the trial planner that I just created. All right. And here she is. She's a freaking beauty. Head over to quick links. Here it is. It'll take me to page six. There we go. 
we're going to head on over to December. It's going to be a blank page, but it's going to bring us all the way down to almost our last page. Um, and then it should be your grid paper. So as you guys can see, all the links work. You can add whatever you want to. And for me personally, I really love this because now you can go into GoodNotes and you can um, add whatever personal text you want to add. So I'm going to add best planner tutorial ever. Okay. So now you have um, a blank piece of paper that you can go ahead and utilize and add fun text to and write on and you know just do the works on all right guys so that is basically it i've given you the basics of all you need to know to be able to create a planner so i'm just going to show you guys my planner really quick just another brief overview of what it could look like once you finish it if you are a student teacher like me i think definitely a year at a glance is super important i will link down below where i got my year at a glance page from all i did was crop it down to both the calendar and the date or the month and I adjusted it to fit in my planner just fine um, by adding those pictures in there and I got it to look like this also to create my lesson planning page all I did was create a chart and keynotes and add in all the information that I needed for lesson planning and I left a space up top to be able to add the dates and that's how it functions so well in my planner and then the last page that I kind of have in here is this page and this is just for keeping track of my schoolwork. All I did was have um, the same type of format that I used for my schedule page. Um, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, of course, all the days laid across. And then I have a task list of tasks that I want to go ahead and get done for that week or any assignments that I want to get done for that week. If you guys have any questions for me, make sure to leave them down in the comment section below so I can get back to all of your questions. But that is basically it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed learning how to make your own planner. And with that said, make sure to comment and subscribe and I will talk to you guys later. Bye guys.